kid. Seriously. <laughs> Welcome to another exciting episode of Star Wars in Review. It's the show that gets an A from Cinescore every single time, so long as our arguments aren't edited out by Luke Neitzel. Over here, I'm Maya Madrid, and over there, my better podcasting hat, Luke Neitzel. Every so often, he and I sit down, discuss what's happening in the Star Wars universe, answer some of your kids' serious, serious questions, and review an episode from the Clone War series. Mr. Neitzel, how are you? I'm doing well. The camera studio is in a little bit of chaos because it's getting new windows tomorrow, but we're getting by. We got a lot of dressers and stuff down here now that would, nor- would normally be upstairs that are now blocking our path. It's very cozy. It's very cozy down here. Yeah. As far as me, I don't know if you knew this, I returned to Twitter recently. It has been, I don't know, what, three years since I've been gone? I was only on for, what, two weeks? So it's <laughs> been very exciting for me being back in the land of the living. I'm finding all sorts of cool things out, like... People are out there talking, and it's making fun of the president. It's interesting. And you haven't once tweeted at a Packer, so... Not yet. I am you. following Packers, though. Um, but I... I mean, that's sure to come. Shall we get started? Let's do it! All right. We're going to start with our Star Wars news. Neitzel, Denis Villeneuve. We've talked before about how it's someone that I like and someone that you like. And and I've mentioned that I'd be interested in seeing him take on a non-saga Star Wars film. I love Sicario. It's one of my favorite films of all time. And you had good things to say about Arrival and Prisoners, I think. And Sicario. Uh, and Sicario. Yep. Um, he also directed Blade Runner 2049. It didn't do the... 2049, excuse me. It didn't do the best at the box office, but it was heralded for its story and for its visuals. In November, it was widely reported that he would be interested in helming a Star Wars movie under certain conditions, much to my delight. But now he's doing the new Dune movie, and he said some not-so-nice things about Star Wars. In an interview with Fandom, he said, quote, Most of the main ideas Star Wars are coming from, or f- most of the main ideas of Star Wars are coming from Dune, so it's going to be a challenge to tackle this. The ambition is to do a Star Wars film that I never saw. In a way, it's Star Wars for adults. End quote. Luke Neitzel, wise one, mend my broken heart and tell me there's still a chance that Villeneuve will direct a Star Wars movie someday. Also, tell us what you make of these comments. Is Villeneuve right? I don't think he's going to do one, personally. I don't think he should have much hope for that. I think he is someone who's done a lot of different types of genre with sci-fi and he's done the the crime thrillers and well, a couple different versions of sci-fi, right? Because he did Blade Runner, which I haven't seen, but it's more action-y. I've seen the the first one. And then Arrival, which is a sci-fi movie, but not an action movie at all. Prisoners, which is a real dark psychological movie. One of the hardest movies I've ever had to watch, but I do recommend it to anyone. Just uh, make sure you know where your kids are while you're watching it, which makes it easier. I don't see him as a guy who's going to stick in one genre too long. And the fact that he just did Blade Runner, the fact that he's doing Dune next, makes me think he's probably going to be the type of guy who takes a break from that, that type of of the area science fiction for a long time. I also think that the box office reception to Blade Runner probably couldn't help along with the reaction to Ryan Johnson's movie, even though that one's done very well in the box office and and done well critically, but there still is more backlash to that movie. I think he's probably a type of guy who, who wants to make his own thing. He doesn't want to adhere to rules. He doesn't want to stay within the boundaries. I mean, that's basically what he's saying with those comments, trying to bolster up the movie he's working on which is going to be viewed as a direct competitor to Star Wars. And I've read the book, the first two books. I mean, it is it is more adult. It, it's, it's certainly not kid-centric at all. And, you know, whether we take Lucas at face value or whatnot, uh, Star Wars movies are supposedly meant to be kids' movies. So what he's saying doesn't offend me. I think there's space for both type of movies. So I, I'm excited that he's doing something in the genre. It would have been nice to see him in a Star Wars thing, but... I'll be I'll be happy with Dune as long as he can pull that off because that's a that's a tricky one to take on as well. I guess for me, I'm just disappointed by the comments because when you look at the three films, The Last Jedi, Rogue One, and before it, Force Awakens, I don't get the kid vibe that I used to get from the prequels or from the original trilogy, and so I get the personally I got the feeling that it that it's kind of something of the past, especially the prequels, and I wasn't offended by the comments. I didn't cry about them or or feel bad. But I was sort of disappointed more because it sounds like when you talk trash about Star Wars, it doesn't sound likely that you're going to direct a Star Wars movie. And that was my hope. It was him. It was a couple of other ones. But he was really the guy that I wanted. And so that's why I was disappointed. 
Yeah, I can, I can understand that. I, I don't think anything he said in there is too bad. I think it's easy to look at it on paper and say that he's really trashing it. I'd be interested to hear how he actually delivered those lines, because I think there is something to be said about, I, I don't want to have to make this movie PG. I want to be able to make a rated R version of Dune, which I believe is what they're going with, though I don't know 100%. So if that was his intent, just to say, hey, I want to make a rated R movie, I don't want to have to worry about censors and things like that, then that makes sense to me. If, if he's just going, Star Wars is dumb, and that's the tone of the interview, then I would feel differently, but it, I think it's hard to judge on written statement. I think that's fair. Number two. This is like a director-centric episode. Uh, recently, Reed Murano is she's a director of the critically acclaimed Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. Great show. She's been another director that was linked with Star Wars with a Star Wars movie, uh, one of the spin-offs. First there were rumors, then we got what seemed like sort of like a half confirmation from an interview with Hollywood Reporter where she confirmed that she had met with Kathleen Kennedy, but she said that it wasn't related to Star Wars. The direct quote was, No, I'm not doing Star Wars. Will you stop adding fuel to the rumors? It's just a meeting. But then she said, and that's all I can say. <laughs> so, <laughs> hold Ken- no hope. Kathleen Kennedy's just Lucasfilm, though, right? I, that's my thing. Why are you meeting with Kathleen Kennedy? Are you yeah. meeting with Kathleen Kennedy for the same reason J.J. Abrams met with Kathleen Kennedy? Are you meeting with Kathleen Kennedy for the same reason that Ryan Johnson? How many times do we hear J.J. say, I'm not doing Star Wars, I'm not doing Star Wars, I'm not doing Star yeah. Wars? And well, it could, it could also mean she went to the meeting and they hated each other, too. You never know. <laughs> so that could be totally t- That could be as well. So having these meetings, the immediate denials by filmmakers, only to have the tables turn like it's happened to us in the past. What do you think of this denial? Is she fibbing? But when she says all that she can say, is she maybe leaning on more? And would you be in favor of her helming a Star Wars movie? And does the Star Wars universe need a female voice? I I think Star Wars does a better job than a lot of franchises in how they do their female characters. I was thinking about that after watching Wonder Woman, that at least to my knowledge, and, and if people disagree, I'd love to hear about it just, just so I learn more, but I, Star Wars doesn't go out of its way post-Lucas to sexualize the women in it. I mean, Rey is not, not shot the same way that Black Widow and Wonder Woman and Justice League are. They aren't scantily clad outfits. They don't, they don't do the slave girl thing anymore or rip Natalie Portman's shirt just around her chest. They did an Attack of the Clones. So I think they've done a better job. My personal thought is I would love to see women get involved in this or foreign directors or African-American directors or, or anything because Star Wars is a big universe. There's a lot of places we can go. There's a lot of places we can expand. And I think it's really limiting in storytelling when we, we only take kind of one demographic of person and let them be in control of it. I want to see things from a lot of different perspectives. I want to learn new things, new approaches. And the more we limit the pool of directors by having it be white men the majority of the time, or in Star Wars' case, the entire time, we're cutting ourselves off from just other people's perspectives and what they can bring to the table. So I would be all for it. I think it would be great. Because the one thing I don't want Star Wars to ever be is stale. And that was my worry a little bit with The Force Awakens, is that if I got three more movies of that, that it would get stale. So let's open it up to as many people as possible. The Handmaid's Tale is a fantastic show. It deserves all the accolades and all the Emmy wins and Golden Globe wins it, it has received. I don't know which particular episodes she did, but if she did any of those episodes, I'm willing to give it a chance. And I also think with a lot of these unknowns, you could look at the Russo brothers. I mean, what was their resume right. beforehand? Their resume was Community, which is one of my favorite all-time shows. But that's not someone you would you would go, oh, they're hiring tv directors from community and throw them into a movie and look how well that turned out so open it up to more people let's see different things now one of the things about opening up to smaller or or more sort of rising talents you look at the past that we've had with josh trank with lord and miller now we're looking at uh denis villeneuve although that's not happening obviously and i also wouldn't say he's up and coming yeah that's fair um but reed morano would be somebody in that boat Mm -hmm. do you think it's wise that maybe kathleen kennedy tries to put more of a Kevin Feige handcuff on things and control things? Or would you like to see it more creative, more sort of everywhere and, and more focus on the director? I, I want to see it, it go different places. I want, I want to see less focus. And I know Kevin Feige has a lot of control, but he's also taken a lot of chances on directors that were lesser known. Like we just mentioned the Russo brothers, Taika Waititi 
had uh, just a couple movies that were smaller New Zealand movies. So they, they took chances on people, and especially in the case of Thor Ragnarok, they let them go way outside what they were doing. I mean, James Gunn's another one. He wasn't a household name that had $100 million movies under his belt. So they took chances, and it worked. Obviously, the Trank and the Lord and Miller thing is disappointing, but hopefully what Kathleen Kennedy has learned is to vet these people a little bit better and make sure that they're in line when they get started so that as things progress, they're more on the same page because it sounds like that might be more of her problem than Kevin Feige's is that she got people that were up and comers, but they, they weren't on the same page. And when she found out what they were doing, they had to completely well, scrap it and start over. For Lord and Miller, for Josh Shrink, I mean, the rumor was that he got intoxicated and ruined an apartment building. Well, yeah. and, that, and they got rid of him before he yeah. even got his foot. And the, the same with... Uh, Gira- Colin Trevorrow yeah. as well, who he basically it sounded like Trevorrow. That they, hey, him and Kennedy, from what I've read, take it or leave it, is that they fought and butted heads, and then when Book of Henry was a huge bomb, they were able to kind of use that as the no, you're done. Um, it wasn't just that that movie bombed; it was that they already didn't like him. So I'm hoping at this stage, it's they're bringing on new directors, and they've obviously they went back to a safe route. They're comfortable with Abrams to finish up this trilogy. We don't have any other directors on board. I think Ron Howard was a pretty safe, reliable, if non-flashy choice. So I'm hoping that now that they've kind of course corrected on some of that stuff, they'll do just a better job of figuring out who they want to put in these positions, but still give it to people that are a little more up and coming. True. All right. Now we're going to head to serious questions for kids. Seriously. Jimmy in St. Louis, friend of the program says Luke. He's got two in now. He does. Uh, Luke, where do you rank your Minnesota Viking playoff losses? How does the brutal exit after Philadelphia's dismantling of your favorite team... Oh, this is the last word's mine. Okay. My question. Compare it to the other times I added a little bit to Jimmy and Sillian. You you made it a topic, so... Yeah. No, this this is actually easier. I much prefer the blowout loss to the close loss. And we've had both. They've been in five championship games in my lifetime. And so you had 87 where Darren Nelson dropped a ball in the end zone that would have tied it right with like maybe a minute left. And they lost to Washington. Uh, They had 98 where Gary Anderson famously missed the field goal, though he is not the one to blame for that game. Then they had the the 2001 where they got blown out 41 to nothing. I think they were down 14 nothing before they even got the ball to the Giants. And then 2009 with Favre where they, they blew a lead in that game multiple times. And then this one where they got blown out. So Darren Nelson one will be at the bottom because I didn't watch it. I was six and I didn't care about football. Next I would go with the next easiest to take was the 41 nothing. I was actually on a plane with our friend Mr. Garth. And I didn't see the game. They announced it over the loudspeaker. So that was bad. And then I would go this Eagles game. Because I did have expectations. I thought we were better than that. I I wasn't going in saying we were going to crush the Eagles. But I thought we would show up a little bit. Which we obviously didn't. But you knew by the end of the first quarter that we were done. It never felt like we were coming back in that game. Then I would go the 2009 one where we lost because that was a very good team and they looked like everything was kind of rolling in their favor. Five turnovers and you still lost in overtime. You know, it's it just hold on to the ball a couple times and especially you had Peterson fumbling in the on the five or seven yard line and then you had Harvin fumbling on our like five yard line. So either of those doesn't happen, we go to the Super Bowl. And then 98 is by by far the hardest. That was my first real experience with a good Vikings team. So I was confident and cocky, and we went 15-1, and one, and we were the highest scoring offense of all time. And how do you stop Randy Moss? He just runs straight. No one can catch him. It's, you know, impossible. Impossible to stay with him. So to blow that, especially to a team that no one thought should even be there in the Eagles, was by far the most disappointing. So this is, this is what did I put this? This is three. It's the worst blowout loss. Well, Jimmy was also interested in my opinion, and in the uh, the line from Office Space, I guess I kind of like them all. Sure. We'll move on to Joy I, here. I had, a, I had a very fantastic time watching the Seahawks-Packers I'm NFC sure, Championship, sure so we've, we've both been on the same side. I'm sure you did, but only one of us actually has won a championship in that sport. 